we are going to be talking about sugar and the effects that sugar has on our health. We're also going to be talking about uh, nutrition labels and how sugar can be hidden on nutrition labels so that you don't know how much sugar is in your food and how to really look at the nutrition labels and see the sugar that, that you're getting in, in these products. Margaret Marshall, a regular contributor to Push Pause, is a personal eating consultant. Roy and Lynn Goldstein are challenged with the craving for processed sugar and have turned to Marshall for a diet change. Marshall offers insightful food guidance for anyone who wants to change their eating habits, allowing them to overcome issues associated with dieting. Sugar is a hidden ingredient that can sabotage your diet, and Marshall feels that it can be controlled. Your body will crave what you're accustomed to giving it. So if you give your body a lot of sugar, if you eat a lot of sugar items, you're going to keep craving that. If you eat a lot of fruit, if you eat a lot of good protein, if you eat a lot of good nutritious food, that's what you're going to crave. So your body craves what it's accustomed to having. So it's your choice what you crave. Let the impulse go and let common sense come in. And let the common sense say, I wasn't going to have an ice cream sundae right now. People are challenged with cravings every day for a multitude of reasons. So you have to say, what is going on here that's making me crave this particular food? Now, very often when you have that sugar craving that just comes on you, very often you're not eating food that is giving you the nutrients your body needs. I'm a diabetic. You're diabetic. Right. And um, I had a medical scare recently. You did? I did. Six years ago, Roy Goldstein was diagnosed as a diabetic. He craves sweets such as cookies and cupcakes, so his sugar intake is poor. Admittingly, it has been difficult for even his doctors to help him control his habit. After a medical scare, he has turned to Marshall for assistance. Margaret really mirrored some of the things that, that nutritionists have said to me, but you forget that, and that's something you really shouldn't forget. And one nutritionist said, and, and, and I'm sure Margaret would agree, you should, if you need a cheat sheet, carry a cheat sheet with you. It's not so difficult to, when you're shopping in a store, to, to read a label and to know what the label's telling you. And I found that when I was doing it, excellent. And I've stopped doing it, and I'm going to start doing it again because of what Margaret mentioned today. He's honest enough to say that in his lifetime, he ate food items that were just loaded with sugar. He would eat baked goods for lunch, he would eat ice cream every day, and that will lead to diabetes. And I can tell you from personal experience working with so many people with diabetes who want to lose weight, because most of them are overweight, not everybody, but most of them are, once you're insulin dependent, it is so difficult to even lose a pound. What someone else would lose a pound, it would be just five times as difficult for someone who's insulin dependent to lose a pound. And the best thing they can do for themselves is lose that weight. When you look at a nutrition label and you want to look for how much sugar is in the product, if it's for the serving size on the top of the nutrition label. Lynn Goldstein has a very difficult time controlling her carbohydrate intake. When we go out, I will eat bread, pasta, rice, potatoes. So even if I decide that I don't want it and it's there in front of me or if it's not on my plate and somebody at the table has it, I will eat theirs. <laughs> so that's how bad it is. Very often when we eat too many white carbohydrates, that turns to sugar in your bloodstream as well, and it does call for more. We get, you know, we crave what we're accustomed to having. So if you're accustomed to having pasta and bread and all these white carbohydrates, you're going to keep craving it. And Marshall says simply that the effective way to reduce or eliminate your desire for sugar intake is to try to stop eating it. When you're eating too many of the processed sugars, too many of the sugar cereals, and too many of the baked good and goods and cookies, fruit tastes tasteless. What's funny is once you get all that processed sugar out of your, your bloodstream and out of your system, you'll be amazed how great fruit will taste to you and how sweet it will taste to you. And that's natural sugar. That is not what we need to worry about. But sometimes, People will just have an apple or eat a piece of fruit and they'll feel hungry. And they'll feel hungry because the sugar in the fruit is just going right into their bloodstream. What you want to do is have a piece of 
uh, protein with it, have a piece, have a hard-boiled egg or a piece of cheese, and then that will slow the sugar absorption from into your bloodstream from the fruit, and it will be a complete snack for you, and you'll be much more satisfied with that. The goal is not to never have sugar. The goal is for you to be in control of the sugar and not have the sugar in control of you. For more from Margaret Marshall on how to control your sugar intake and other dietary advice, go to margaretmarshallassociates.com. For Push Pause in Ronkonkoma, this is Archie Snowden.